Miss Marla David, Adonai Rohi Loewech Sar. Binote she yarbit sein yan memen uchot yan nachaleni. Nafshi yishoveiv. Yan nacheni v'maglet tzedek l'ma'an shemo. Kama ki helech v'git sal mavet. Lo irara ki atay madi. Shif bechau mishan techad hemman yanach amoni. Taruch lifanai shulchan neged tzurirai. Tishanta vashemen roshi kosir vaya. Ach tov chesed yirdifuni ko yamechayai. Vishaviti Bivet Adonai Le'orech Yamin I've chanted for you the words of our 23rd Psalm. On these days when we are feeling challenged and when we are searching for comfort and strength, we often turn to the psalmist. And so I ask you now to recite these words with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we will remember him. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we will remember him. In the opening buds and in the rebirth of spring, we will remember him. In the blueness of sky and in the warmth of summer, we will remember him. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we will remember him. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we will remember him. When we are weary and in need of strength, we will remember him. And when we are lost and sick at heart, we will remember him. When we have joys we yearn to share, we will remember him. So long as we live, he too will live. For he is now a part of us as we remember Sheldon Block. To his children, to Peter and Stevie, and also to Faith and Carla, to his grandchildren, Noah, Todd, Tiffany, Samantha, Danny, and also to Abby, Mark, and Mike, and to his great-grandchildren, Grady, Daxton, and Reagan. And today, we also lovingly remember Sheldon's son, Scott, and his son-in-law, Bob, both of blessed memory. To all the members of the family and cherished friends we've joined together today to remember, but also to celebrate the full and beautiful life of your beloved Shelley. We've been taught by our sages that birth is a beginning and death a destination, and life is a journey from childhood to maturity and from youth to age, from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion, and then, perhaps, to wisdom. From weakness to strength, or strength to weakness, and often back again. From health to sickness, and back we pray to health again. From offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love. 
from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion, and grief to understanding, from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat, until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way, but in having made the journey, stage by stage, a sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning and death a destination, and life is a journey, a sacred pilgrimage to life everlasting. Shelley's journey of 90 years began here in Cleveland. He was born in 1926 to his Russian immigrant parents, Hyman and Frida Block. Shelley and his older sister, Shirley, they grew up in the nostalgic neighborhood fondly known as Glenville. Their parents owned and operated two grocery stores, and so the Block family fared well during what we would call some of the most difficult and challenging years in our nation's history. When most 13-year-old Jewish boys were focusing their energies on sports and school and perhaps preparing for a bar mitzvah, young Shelley, who was a good student, was also running his own little business. In his early teens, he was already an entrepreneur. When Shelley was 13 years old, and this would have been around 1939, food rations were in place and certain items were difficult to come by. Shelley drew up a plan and began a service where he delivered chickens to Chinese restaurants. Brilliant at age 13. Following his graduation from Glenville High School in 1944, Shelley matriculated to the Ohio State University, and there he studied business for two years. Now, he may have also minored in the lighter side of life as well, as Shelley enjoyed his social life there. He enjoyed the fraternity and the parties. And at one of those parties, Shelley met Betty Hollander. They dated and were married in 1947, when Shelley was just 21 years old. And while this marriage did result in divorce, it brought forth Shelley's firstborn, his son Peter. And Peter, you shared with me that you remember family and friends and friends who were like family. And there were some very close friends, the Comp family. They were near and dear to your dad's heart and to yours. And when Jerry Comp's husband died much too soon, your dad remained a trusted and close friend to Jerry and to her children, to Scott and Stevie. And then Jerry and Shelley began a courtship that blossomed into love, and they married in 1974 with Rabbi Dan Silver officiating. Stevie and Peter, your parents enjoyed life together, and you mentioned that family always was number one. Family came first. Together, they created a beautiful home. And it also sounds like it was a fun home. The house with the pool, the house with the ping pong table, the place where Stevie and Scott's friends always wanted to hang out. And Jerry and Shelley created a loving home, a home where Sunday night was family night. Everyone was expected expected to be at Shelley and Jerry's place for Sunday night dinner, the children and then the grandchildren as each of them entered into the picture. The two of them enjoyed traveling and they loved cruises through the Caribbean. Now, your father also set an example, not just to you, his children, but also to his grandchildren. And the example he set was the meaning of having a great work ethic. Shelley was a hardworking man. First, it was the business that he and his father began, Hyman Builders. And after the death of his dad, Shelley continued on with his business, Fireside Builders. And as hard as Shelley worked to make a living, we must remember how hard he worked at making a life. A life for himself and his beloved Jerry, and a beautiful life for his greatest joys and treasures, his children and grandchildren. The biggest component in Shelley's effort to make a life was discovered in his passion for boating. He and Jerry became owners of a cabin cruiser appropriately named Shelley B. 
One of the best perks of their combined love for boating was certainly in meeting fellow boaters. Lynn and Larry Miller. The Millers and the Blocks were a great foursome filled with adventures that included boating trips to Putin Bay, Kelly's Island, and Canada, as well as just those simpler times, relaxing times, just enjoying each other's company at the Lakeside Yacht Club. These were all great times with the greatest of friends. His grandchildren also have sweet memories of special times aboard the, Sel the Shelley B. Noah, you remember those trips to Cedar Point. Sometimes the waves were a little rough, but somehow with your grandpa at your side, you survived it. And Tiffany has memories of being a little girl sitting on her grandpa's lap on the boat, where she'd sit on his lap and he'd let her drive the boat. And one of Tiffany's fondest memories as an adult was the time when her grandpa and you, Peter, and along with her brother, Todd, and her husband, Mark, they all went on a cruise together to Aruba and Curacao. And not only was it a beautiful cruise, but even more importantly for Tiffany, it was a time where she could spend some true quality time with her grandfather. Todd, you remember summers where you and your sister would be here in Cleveland. You could be on the boat maybe watching fireworks on the 4th of July or perhaps the air show on Labor Day weekend. And Todd, you also remember that you came into town and you helped your grandfather when it was time to build Stevie and Bob's home. And you lived with your grandfather during this time for six months while you helped him build this house. And you said that the knowledge and the wisdom that you gained from him, you described as priceless. Sammy, you have sweet memories of days at Bratnall swimming in the pool when you were little. And just in recent months, you have beautiful memories of sharing your upcoming marriage to Mike with your grandfather. And he was excited about it. And he wanted to be there. And he even made sure you would promise to have gin and VO at the party. And Danny, although you were just a little baby, you and your parents were living in New Orleans. And your dad, Scott, he became ill. You and your mom, Carla, you moved back to Cleveland. And the three of you moved in with your grandfather. And while it is so very bittersweet, we know that these moments are so special and so deeply treasured. And you also mentioned to, to me, Danny, that tomorrow marks the 15th anniversary of Scott's passing. And this is, again, a very sweet and profound memory. After nearly 22 years of marriage, Jerry passed in 1995, and Shelley kept pushing forward. He kept working a lot, and he kept appreciating life. He would vacation with friends, go on cruises to Alaska and Panama, and he liked to visit his buddies Lynn and Larry at their home in Florida. He would also visit friends out in Colorado. No matter what he was doing, though, it seems to me that Shelley had a very powerful impact on his family, on each child and each grandchild. He impacted you in a very unique and wonderful way. His son, Scott, of blessed memory, developed a love for boating. Peter and his grandson, Noah, their passion, their careers in construction and real estate. And Todd, also your interest in the construction world, and recently in 3D graphic design, something that your grandfather was quite excited about. And then Shelley's next generation, whether you called him grandpa or papa, Tiffany, Samantha, Danny, and also Stevie, his daughter, he was so proud of your involvement in healthcare and your continuing education. Danny, he knew you had started hearing from colleges and this was exciting to him. Samantha, your graduate studies in occupational therapy and Tiffany as a dental hygienist and Stevie, his pride in you becoming a nurse. He was proud of his grandsons, his granddaughters, his children. And you might say he was a man who knew great nachas, which means he had a lot of pride in all of you. And if you needed anything from him, anything, he was there. Stevie, as I mentioned earlier, the home that he helped 
build for you and Bob of blessed memory when the two of you were first married. And the way that Noah, Peter, and your dad all joined forces together to help with your current residence, making sure that it was finished to perfection for you, Stevie. This was a real family effort. Shelley played this important role in everyone's lives. And there's another member of the family that I need to mention who also has and had a very special place in Shelley's heart, and that's you, Emma. You've been a member of the Block family for over 20 years, and I'm told that you've been there always for the family, for everything. You were there for Jerry, you've been there for Shelley, and Peter and Stevie assured me that you're the one who kept everyone in line, and that you were the one who always, always was able to make Shelley laugh and I hope you know how very important you are to all of these people. If there's a song to describe his life, it could very well be Sinatra's My Way. Up until this past October, Shelley was going into his office every day. Let me say that he was driving himself to his office every day, living life independently and with dignity. Our tradition teaches us that words which come from the heart enter directly to the heart. And there are some family members who have some words in their heart they want to share with us today. First, I would like to call on his daughter, Stevie, who has a special reading. So I wanted to say something special for my dad, um, and I couldn't find the words. And for those of you who know me, I can always find the words. It's what I do. I can find words. And I sat down with a pencil and paper, and I couldn't find the words, and I don't know why. And then I thought about it, and I thought, how do you say goodbye to somebody that's been there your entire life? How do you say goodbye to the person who's been there in your corner, who's guided you, who's directed you? who's listened to you, who supported you. How do you say goodbye to somebody like that? How do you say goodbye to the person that stood behind you no matter how stupid your decisions have been? How do you say goodbye? How do you say goodbye to somebody who's always made you feel safe and kept you from being afraid? And that's what it was, I figured it out. I couldn't say goodbye because I was scared. I was frightened. I was frightened of facing the rest of my life without him. He's always been there. I didn't know how I was going to get through it. And then I was going through my email, and I discovered something. Somebody had sent me a beautiful poem. And I read it, and I reread it, and I read it again. And there were my answers, and there were my words. And I wanted to share them. I promise it's short. It's called Comfort. Comfort me with your love, O oh God. Wrap me up in your strong embrace. Shelter me from the storm, O oh Lord. Envelop me in your tender care. By day, I pour out my heartbreak to you. By night, I give you my racing thoughts. In you, I take refuge. In you, I will not be afraid. For you hold me strong. You hold me safe. Calm my fearful heart, O oh God. Still my anxious mind, O oh Lord, for all my life is found in you. All my being is given to you. All my hope begins in you. So, Dad, it's okay. I'm going to be all right. I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not alone. I'm in really good hands. Thank you. I'd like to now call on his grandson, Noah. Well, prayer, emotion, and public speaking are my best, so I'll give it a shot. Sheldon Black was a great friend, business associate, relative, 
and everyone always spoke highly of him my whole life. But to me, he was everything. He was my best friend, my grandpa, my dad, my best man at my wedding, and my true life superhero. <sighs> to say I was lucky was an understatement. <sighs> As a kid, he gave me everything. I have a million memories I could sit here all day and speak about. He honestly never told me no. I have memories of waking up for breakfast. Didn't matter what time I woke up, he had a pretzel bagel cut in three. He separated my crunch berries from the Captain Crunch. At lunch, he'd have my meatballs separated from my noodles. I, I couldn't imagine being a bigger pain in the ass, and, and it, it never mattered. I had dinners with my grandparents at places that I thought were normal, but I, I, I mean, I grew up eating frog legs, lobster tails, and ribs. I, 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 to this day, I, I just don't understand how I thought it was normal, but I did. On Saturdays, I went bowling, and then to Toys R Us for a gift afterwards, which I thought was normal, and now I realize how much it isn't. We would go to Good Time Charlie's to play skee ball. He would take me during the week for hours to play free play at video games where he just stood and watched me. I'd make him take me to our gang for waffles and chocolate and ice cream, and him and my grandmother would watch me swim for hours late night at his house when I should have been in bed, and instead I was swimming, playing ping pong and pinball. As I grew older, we wa used to watch wrestling together, and that wasn't good enough. Whenever they were there, we had front row seats. He would take me to the park to play baseball, he would show up at all my sports. He would make sure on my wrestling tournaments that we went to whatever I wanted to eat afterwards. On weekends, it was boating with my friends, invited. Everybody was his friend if it was my friend. We had pool parties after baseball during the week. Him and my grandmother would encourage us to do whatever we wanted. He taught me how to drive. He was very proud of taking me to where one of his streets where he built houses to show me how to drive. <laughs> As I grew older, we had trips together. He helped in every business I ever did, good, bad, and ugly. There were times that were, some were successful, some were not, but he always told me that it would always be all right. We would go to weekly dinners where he would tell any waitress that would listen his life story. If there was friends that were there, he would always buy him a drink. Anybody that I would know, he would buy a drink immediately. Again, he still never told me no. Often we would talk, and I would say anything, and he would say, it's okay, it'll work out, it'll be all right. I joked to my mother, she'd ask me what he said. I said, I could have told him I killed half the world, and he would have told me it was okay, it'll work out. <sighs> As I got older, and got married, there was no choice of who was going to be my best man. He had a connection with my wife, who for, I know reminded me of my grandmother. He couldn't wait to give her my grandmother's jewelry. He actually spread it out so that it could be overtime. I just He just had to make it an event every time he did it. Then I became a father. This is when I really knew he was a true life superhero. How we did everything he did, I'll never know. He still never told me no. I say no before 7 a.m. every day and another 50 times before I go to sleep. He never told me no ever. I don't I still do not know how he did it. Over the last couple of years, I've had an amazing thing. 
I've been able to have the pleasure of having many really crazy flashbacks from being a kid. There's been many, but I'll share a few. They're almost surreal. There's been many times where I've hugged my kid after bath with a towel. <laughs> he had giant lion towels, and every time I would get out of the tub or shower, I could feel him hugging me with them. It's the same thing that I do with my kids often. In the summertime, I'll swim around with my kids on my back. There's times that I've done that, that I can almost feel myself on his back swimming through his backyard. <laughs> I took both my kids to the circus. We used to go to the circus as long as I can remember yearly. Whatever toys I wanted, whatever junk food I wanted, it, it didn't matter. But as I walked out of the circus holding my kids' hands, I, I swear I could feel <laughs> myself holding it to his. It's the craziest thing. I played skee ball with Grady, and they would throw tickets at me. I used to do this for hours with my grandfather. He would take me there until I won whatever prize I wanted to win. It didn't matter how many tickets I had, I had to keep playing. The most important flashback that I happened happened last week. I always knew that there was going to come a time where I had to say goodbye to him. There was a million things I could have said, but the easiest thing to say was thank you. I thanked him for my history. I thanked him for how to become a dad. And he said, no problem. It was easy. I love you. The last month has been brutal, to say the least. We all knew when he couldn't work anymore that was truly going to be his cause of death. All he cared about was taking care of his family. He literally kept working to take care of his family. If it meant another dollar in all his family's pockets, that's what he was going to do. <laughs> my mother, my Uncle Peter, Emma Lynn, took amazing care of him. He just couldn't be himself. I couldn't talk to him and he couldn't talk to me. I joked with my mother that over the last couple weeks, every time I try to talk to him, he'd close his eyes and turn his head and, and I just couldn't get any words out. We could talk to each other on the phone, but in person, he would talk to somebody, I'd try to talk to him, he'd close his eyes and turn his head. I knew that's just the way it had to be. I've heard him say this a million times, he lived a great life. He said it more often over the last year or so, and at the end even more. He did live a great life, and all who loved him did as well because of him. I'm going to end this with me listening to my kids, his grandkids, call them Great Papa. I really couldn't think of a better line to end it with because he really was a great papa. Thanks. The words of Ralph Waldo Emerson. To laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden path, or a redeemed social condition to know that even one life has breathed easier because you lived. This is to have succeeded. Sheldon Block succeeded. And we join with the sages of our people as we say Zichron Livrach, may the memory of Shelley Block always be our blessing. Amen. 
Those of you who are able, I invite you to rise now for the memorial prayer, El Malay Rachamim. El Malay Rachamim, Shochen Bamromim, Am Semen Ochan Ochan Hatachat Kanfer Ashkina, Bemalot Kedushim Motorim, Kezo Hararaki Amasirim. Et nihishmat yakirenu, shahalach le olamo beanedden te he minuchato. Anna bahar rachamim astirehu, viseter kinafachol olamim, vititror bitror achayim et nishmato. Adonai hu nechalato, vianuach bishalom, al mishkavo, venomar, amen. O merciful God who dwells on high, who is full of compassion, grant perfect rest beneath the shelter of your divine presence among the holy and pure who shine as the brightness of the firmament. To our dear departed Sheldon Block, who has gone now to his eternal home. May Shelley's soul be bound up in the bonds of eternal life and grant that his memory inspire all of us to noble and consecrated living. And to this we can answer, amen. Please be seated. I would like to just share with all of you that we will be leaving here and proceeding to the Bet Olam Cemetery that is located at the corner of Richmond and Chagrin. Following the interment, the family will receive friends at Acacia Park Drive, 2202 Acacia Park Drive in the reception room. Visitation will be today until 8 p.m. and also tomorrow from 2 until 4 and again from 6 until 8. Anyone who is wishing to make a contribution in memory of Shelley, the family has suggested that you might consider the Geraldine and Sheldon Block Flower Fund care of Montefiore Home or the Gathering Place. On behalf of the family, we thank you for being here today. 